So my name is Tony Allen, I'm Chief Executive of the Age Tech Certification Scheme. We're kind of the host of the whole thing. We, we apply to the uh, Safe Online Fund, which is a uh, uh, hosted with UNICEF for funding to bring together a community of interest across the globe uh, on this whole issue of age assurance. It's incredibly important that uh, children have a safer experience online, but in order to be able to do that, you've got to know their children, first of all. You've got to know that they're adults if they want to be going on to adult content or buying adult products. And it's a really tricky thing to do when you can't see the person in front of you, you can't uh, judge who that person is, it's a tricky thing to do. So this whole uh, uh, process is about bringing that about so that children have a safer experience online. Yeah, so it is a uh, complex task uh, and there are no, there's no one size fits all. There's no, we do it this way and it'll work or we do it that way and it'll work in all circumstances. So you've got a large range of different use cases, different reasons why you might need to know someone's age from whether you want to sell them alcohol or whether you want to give them access to gambling material or whether you're entitled to a senior citizen bus pass. There are whole reasons, loads of reasons there. And so the standard has to be flexible enough to be able to uh, accommodate all of those different reasons but also to enable you to compare like with like and be able to compare different approaches and different modalities uh, so you can um, uh, like compare the market. Yeah, so the, um, the steps that you can be taken can take are depend on what you're trying to do. So think first of all about why you need to know the age of the person that is um, uh, accessing your services. What's the, the, the trigger? What's causing that? It could be a legal reason, so it could be, for instance, that um, you, the sale of alcohol or, or liquor is generally age-restricted all over the world, so you have to be able to demonstrate that you've implemented procedures to prevent that from happening. But it could be that you just simply want to provide an age-appropriate experience. So if you are uh, one of our people, here's Lego, and they make different types of Lego for different age groups, and they have online uh, system, online services where you can go on and chat. You want a particular age group of people there. So there's lots of different reasons. When you've got that reason, then basically shop around and look at the different solutions there are there. This Thursday we've got uh, the tech showcase where there's lots of examples of those uh, solutions there. But also look and check that they're themselves certified and tested. Don't necessarily just accept what the marketing hype says. Go behind that and say, well, how do we know that that's true and how do we uh, ensure ourselves that your system actually works? And there you should be looking for certification marks and for um, uh, evidence of conformity assessment. So the main trend there is at the moment is traditionally age, verif age assurance, age verification has been done by you producing evidence of your driving license, your passport, a document, an ID document, and proving who you are, and then extracting from that an age attribute to say how old you are. That's the, uh, going back for the last 20, 30 years online, that's how it's been done. The problem with that is that that's sharing a load of information about you that you don't actually need to share to be able to prove that you're over a certain age. And so what the trend is at the moment is towards actually not doing that, not gathering ID documents and data, and actually just doing a, um, uh, using your bi biometrics, for instance. So looking at your face, looking, listening to your voice, um, looking at the size of your hand, all kinds of different methodologies you can do. And in fact, there's uh, one here, uh, which is gonna be able to, uh, working on how you do age assurance based on your pulse. And how, quite how they work that out, I don't know. I'll be really interested to see. But that's um, uh, part of the uh, different modalities you can have. Well, I think that first, first of all, we will get to an international level of standards. So at the minute, you've got lots of lo local ones, some in the UK, some in Europe, some in the US. Lots of development and regulation, which is quite piecemeal. I think what will happen is that it will co coalesce around a global, international, interoperable uh, standard set. And this is part of the work we're doing here at this conference. Uh, I also think... Um, uh, they'll be quite uh, technology uh, enabling so um, they're not in saying you must do it this way or you must do it that way they're saying actually if you are going to do it how effective is it how, what's the classification accuracy of the output of your, your system and I think that'll become much clearer I also think that the regulators around the world will become much more confident to regulate the internet than they have been in the past so a lot of the past has been it's, it's impossible to regulate, it's just a, the Wild West, it's crazy out there what's online. That's changed in the last few years with online safety legislation uh, coming through. And a lot of the principle behind that is, you know, if it's illegal offline, it should also be illegal online. Um, and and that's, you should be taking steps to ensure the safety of your users, particularly if they're children. Yeah, so what children experience online is, is in some cases, horrific. Um, uh, I mean, I've been in this uh, 
world for 20 odd years or so, um, I've seen the advent of Google and, uh, and, and online services. They're all sort of 15, 20 years old uh, as organizations, but what they give you access to material wise was never available to me when I was a child and, and it's a, you're growing up in a different age and a different era. And there are some really difficult things for children to have to deal with and to become resilient over uh, what they see often by accident is pornography. And it's not soft pornography, it's hardcore, extremely uh, violent, aggressive pornography. And if you're a child growing up and you are still getting your head around relationships and what relationships might be like, that can have a big impact on the way that you treat partners or on the way that you behave. Um, if, if that becomes normalised as part of what some people describe as the wallpaper of children's lives, it will change the nature of society, it will change the nature of behaviour, um, uh, uh, risky sexual behaviour, uh, risky behaviours on violence and gaming and stuff like that. And so it's really important that you have those uh, space to grow up in, a, in, a, in a, 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 an enriching and a... Um, uh, global world but without some of the downsides of that.